So there's also going to be some equations we're going to want to solve that use the double angle formula as well. This is why it's important to have these things memorized, because you will look at these equations and you will be able to just very quickly, it just becomes easy, really quick. So again, the thing that you should notice when you solve this equation, this is what you need to be working towards, is the first thing you need to try and look at is what the arguments are. So I have a 2x and an x. So I can't solve this equation because I have a mixture of the arguments, and I need to make sure that they are all consistently the same thing as each other. So I'm obviously going to be using the double angle formula for cos 2x here. And cos 2x, we know, has got three different versions. Haroon, give me one of the versions as quick as you can. Give me all the first one that we do. Oh, um, yep. Uh, plus sine squared x. Minus sine squared x. OK, because if it was plus, it would have been yeah. equal to 1. Chaz, can you give me another one? one minus two sine Good, 1 minus 2 sine squared x. And then the third one, Zahir? Good. So you need to have these three at your disposal ready to go. And then I need you to say to yourself, right, I'm trying to replace cos 2x, and I've got a choice of those three. There are some that are going to be better than others, and I want to think why one of them might be better than other ones. So just quickly talk to the person next to you. What, which one would you pick, and why would you pick it? And why? Make sure you say, and why. Okay, uh, Harmon, which one would you pick and why? Last one. The last one. I agree with you, I would pick the last one. Why? It's just because the other one's got sine. Yeah, exactly. If you pick this one or this one, you're going to have an equation that is a mixture of cos squared, sine squared, and cos x. So it's too messy. We want to just be able to use the third one because that's going to be the most useful. So I'm going to make sure I keep the three there and I'm going to make sure I bracket it so that I can substitute in 2 cos squared x minus 1. That's my cos 2x replaced. Then I have minus cos x plus 2 equals 0. So expanding that out, I have 6 cos squared x minus 3 minus cos x plus 2 equals 0. And I'm just going to write it in the traditional way, where I start them with cos squared, then cos, and then it will be a minus 1 like this. What type of equation do we have? It's a quadratic. So if we have a quadratic, you can all use your quadratic equation solver on your calculators rather than bothering factorizing. So we're going to have 6 minus 1 and minus 1. And we get that our answers are a half and minus a third. And we're going to be solving this between 0 and 360 degrees, OK? Now, remember, it's cosine. So you're going to think to yourself, how do you find the second solutions? Right. What is the inverse cos of a half? Does it need a calculator? 60 degrees, OK? It is 60 degrees. How do you find the other one? Good. You do 360 minus this one. And 360 minus this is 300. There's no point adding or subtracting 360 to either of these because it's going to go outside of the range. But remember, sometimes you will need to do that. So my first one that I've got here, if I do the inverse cos of minus a third, I get, if I actually type it in properly, 109.5 degrees. That's to one decimal place. And then the other answer I do is 360 minus that which is 250.5 degrees. OK? Sometimes what I do with these is I put them on Desmos. So I'm going to put this on Desmos so you can see what we've actually just solved here. So while you're writing that down, I'll just have a quick look. So when I, type in the cal when I type in 3 cos 2x minus cos x plus 2, what am I actually looking for? Uh, what am I looking for where this is going to be happening? Whoops. Good. I want to know where it hits the x-axis because the graph, we've said, is equal to 0. So I want to know where is this graph. This is how weird the graph looks. It's kind of like a bumpy sort of one. We want to know between, shh, 
0 and 360, where is it equal to 0? So the answers are 60, 109.5, 250.5, and 300. So it's kind of nice when you can do the question, use all the rules, and see that you come up with the right answer. OK, we're going to do another one now. And this one is a bit trickier. So we're using another identity. This time, the identity is obviously going to be the tan double angle formula. Now, normally, we say that tan 2y is equal, not 2y, let's do 2x. That tan 2x is equal to, who can remember it? 2 tan x over 1 minus tan squared x. So you need to be really careful about which one we're going to change it, because we've got these two different arguments, right? We've got a 4y, and we've got a 2y. Which is the one that you think we're going to want to change? Good, the 4y, because the 4y one is bigger, like the left-hand side, we can break it down into the one that's on the right-hand side. And it's not always clear what these equations are going to become, but we start off doing something, and then we see what happens. So just be really careful, because if I'm replacing this with a 4y, these need to be replaced with 2y's. OK, so just be really careful that when you're using the double angle formula in this direction, you're halving the angle. So I'm going to go and write the equation out now and see what happens. So we have 2 multiplied. Tan of 4y is going to be 2 tan 2y over 1 minus tan squared 2y. And that's being multiplied by tan 2y. And that's equal to 3. So all I've done is I've replaced the tan 4y with 2 tan 2y minus 1 divided by 1 minus tan squared 2y, just using that double angle identity that we have. Pardon? No, what's the question? OK. Are you sure? Is that here? Yeah. Yeah, because this is 4y, the double angle formula says that the relationship between the starting argument and then the finishing argument, once you've broken it down, is it halves. So because it was a 4y in this beginning part that I want to break down into its smaller parts, I'm breaking it down so that it will be a 2y and a 2y here. And the good thing about that being broken down into a 2y is that then I have the whole question is now in terms of 2y. So I don't need to break them all down into y. That's a good point, actually. We don't need to then also do the double angle formula to this. Otherwise, imagine how messy this question would look. You'd be having to do the double angle formula here, here squared, and here. It would just be crazy. So as long as the arguments now match, which they do, we can just proceed with the question from here. So I'm not sure like the best way that you guys would want to do this. But what I notice is when I'm multiplying by a fraction, this is the same as multiplying by this and then dividing by this. So the only thing that's happening on this left-hand side that's getting in the way is this dividing by thing that I've got here. And to get rid of this dividing by thing, I'm going to multiply it up to the other side. So that what I'm left with is 2, 2 tan 2y, tan 2y equals 3, 1 minus tan squared 2y. And I am happy with this because everything is tan, everything has the same argument. Everything is the same trig. Everything has the same argument. Yep. How did you get to the left and right? Because this is just being divided by this. So this is, you could have seen it as it being multiplied by this, 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 and this is just being divided by here. So I've just multiplied up by 1 minus tan squared 2y. OK? It's a bit like if you had an equation like 2 multiplied by 3 fifths multiplied by 4 equals whatever, equals x. You would just multiply by the 5. You could multiply by the 5 so that you would get 2 times 3 times 4 equals 5x. OK? It's just behaving the way that fractions behave. So I'm just going to expand this left-hand side out. So that's 2 times 2 is 4. And tan 2y times tan 2y is tan squared 2y. And on the right-hand side, I've got 3 minus 3 tan squared 2y. And then I'm just going to add the 3 tan squared 2y to the left-hand side so that I have 7 tan squared 2y equals 3. I'm going to keep going so that tan squared 2y is 3 over 7. 
and then I'm going to square root. When I square root, I need to be careful to plus or, minus. plus or minus. So I've got plus or minus 3 over root 7. And if you notice in the question, it wanted the values for y to be between 0 and pi. But our equation is now with 2y. What do we do with the range? Um, double it. So I'm going to check for 2y. It's going to be between 0 and 2 pi. So you're going to need to switch your calculator back to radians mode. And we're going to do two types of questions. We're going to do that tan 2y is root 3 over 7. And we're also going to do that tan 2y is minus so root 3 over 7. No, because this argument is locked up inside the tan function. This is not, this is not 2 tan something where you can divide both both sides like that. The argument stays the same. You can't mess with the argument, OK? So I'm going to do the inverse tan of root 3 over 7 that gives me that 2y is equal to, I'm not even in degrees, in radians mode. And I get 0 0.5796. How would I find the next one for tan? Which is 100, which is pi. So I'm going to say that's one of my solutions, and the other one is 3.7212. I'm going to do the same on this side. This time I'm going to do the inverse tan of minus root 3 over 7. And unsurprisingly, you get minus 0 0.5796. But that's not inside the range. So I'm going to have to add on pi, and I get... 2.56195. But I think I can still get another one that is less than 2 pi. 2 pi is like 6 point something, right? So I add another pi, and I get 5.7035, etc. But this one I won't use because it's outside of the range. So all I need to do to finish off is I need to take all of these values and I need to half them and round them to two decimal places. So that's 0 0.5796 divided by 2. That is 0 0.29. 3.721. 0 0.7212. I'm going to half that and I get 1.86. I'm not going to use that one. I'm just going to do this one. So that's 2.56195 divided by 2. And that's 1.28. And then the last one, which is 5.7035, is 2.85. So I have my one, two, three, four solutions for this particular one that we've got here. And then again, I'm going to go back to Desmos, and I'm going to see what it looks like. So whilst you're writing that down, it's 2 tan 4y tan 2y. OK, so this is what the graph looks like. I might just quickly change the y-axis so it's just up to you. And shh. so I've put it along the bottom. I really should it between 0 and 2 pi. Let's make that a little bit better. Uh, let's just do it. Oh, we only wanted it up to pi, I think. So here's the graph. And we wanted to know when the graph was equal to what? What did it say in the question? Three. So I'm going to find out when it is equal to y equals 3. And I'm only interested in it between 0 and pi. So I want this solution that we've got here, 0.29. That's one of them we've got. 1.28, 1.86, 2.85. Now, this next one would have been 3.431. Why have we not included 3.43? Uh, 
it's greater than pi. And the question only wanted it between 0 and pi that we've got there. OK? So we are going to not do this trickier example. We're going to do some questions from exercise 7D, and then we'll do that trickier example at the end of our lesson.